This strategy uses the Bollinger Bands, the RSI, and a candle pattern to detect reversal points and good entry positions. It also scores positive returns in an automated backtest using Python, even when we include commissions and spread costs. I will show you the strategy rules and the Python code I used for the backtest. You can also download the code from the link in the description of this video so you can use it for your own experiments. The first indicator we will use is the Bollinger Bands. We will wait for a candle to close above the upper curve or below the lower curve. In this example, the green candle closes above the upper Bollinger and the candle after it is closing below the lower point of the green candle revealing a strong seller's reaction to the current price. Obviously in a symmetrical case when the candle closes below the lower Bollinger band and the following green candle closes above the high of the previous candle we have a long signal. After this we need to confirm the Bollinger and candle signal with the RSI. So in a short setup we will look for a RSI value above a high threshold. And in a long setup, we look for a RSI below the low threshold. These conditions work well, but one more condition is still needed to avoid trading in small volatility areas. We need to set a minimum threshold for the width of the Bollinger Band when the entry signals occur. For example, for this signal, the Bollinger Band width corresponds to the difference between the upper and lower curves at the moment when the signal is triggered. The easiest way to include this condition in the code is to compute the relative difference between the upper and lower curves. So it's the upper minus the lower Bollinger divided by the middle value. This way most of the obtained values are ranging between 0 and 1 and they are easier to handle in loops and conditions while coding and trying different trading setups. The trade management part uses the ATR to account for the volatility while setting the stop loss and the take profit levels. We will go through these in details in the coding part along with the specific parameters of the different indicators. Now let's check the Python code, run the backtest and analyze the results. And by the way, this strategy was pointed out by someone in the comments. I went through the videos to check the details and got back to you with the following. This is our Jupyter notebook file. So I'm loading the BMW stock uh, candlesticks, the daily time frame between 2011 and 2024 and I'm cleaning the data, so just chunking out the uh, fractions of seconds because we don't need these from the GMT time column, then uh, casting to date time, the correct format. Cleaning candles where we didn't have any movement, so the high is equal to low. So we're resetting the index and starting with our technical indicators, the Bollinger Bands, the RSI, the ATR, and I'm just renaming the columns here to use them later on, the Bollinger Bands and so on. And I'm computing this new column called Bollinger band width, so that's the high minus the low divided by the middle curve of the Bollinger band. And so our data frame looks like this. So we have the GMT time column, open, high, low, close volume, the Bollinger band low, middle, high, and other columns. We have the RSI, ATR, and the width, which is the last column we just added. Notice the values here for the Bollinger band width in between zero and one, and this is what we're expecting. And here's where all the magic happens. These are our conditions. They are all written in a function called apply total signal. It takes a data frame, the RSI low threshold, which is by default equal to 30, the RSI threshold high, which is by default equal to 70, and the Bollinger band width threshold, which by default is equal to 0.0015. We might want to change these values later on here, depending on how you're going to be uh, choosing your signals if you want to have a selective indicator. So we're defining a new column called total signal. By default, it's equal to zero, so there are no signals. And for each of the candles, for each row starting from row one up to the length of the data frame, we're going to check the previous candle closes below the Bollinger Band. So is the previous candle closing below the Bollinger Band? And that's going to be close, locate I minus one. So the previous candle, is it below the Bollinger Band of locate I minus one as well? Then we have previous RSI below the threshold. Is the previous RSI of index I minus one below the RSI threshold low? So that's 30 for now by default. Then we have the current candle conditions. Oh, so the close is above previous high. The current candle close for locate I index above the high of the I minus one. So the previous candle, if it's closing or engulfing the candle and closing above the highest point of the previous candle, then this is um, a condition that's verified. Then we have the last condition, which is the Bollinger Band width. Is it greater than the threshold? So we're going to check if the width of the current candle 
is above the Bollinger Band width threshold, which is by default here 0 0.0015. And this is it. If we combine these conditions, if we have previous candle closes below the Bollinger Band and previous RSI below the threshold and closes above previous high, so the current is closing above the previous high, and we have the Bollinger Band width greater than the threshold, at this point we're going to add uh, to the total signal um, value equal to, so that's our indicator or value for a long signal. In the opposite direction here, so it's all symmetrical, we have the uh, value 1 as a signal because this is indicating a short signal to sell the market. And then we return the data frame, which is also with the total signal column that we've just added. I'm calling the function in this line, providing the data frame, the uh, RSI threshold low, high, just as the defaults. I just decreased the, the width of the threshold to be less selective and to have enough signals. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. Okay, now we can visualize these points or these signals. I'm going to run a visualization uh, cell. So this is one signal that we're catching here. This is a great signal. As you can see, it's a perfect entry point and we have an uptrend afterwards. So we can check others visually as well. But before that, just a quick word about this function here and what we're doing. I'm just checking in the data frame when we have a signal two, a long signal. I'm placing a position x low minus 10 to minus 4 so that's a point let's say position just below the low of the current candle because we have a let's say a long signal in the opposite case when we have a short signal i'm positioning a point just above the high of the candle and then we're going to use these coordinates that i'm going to put in point position new column in the data frame i'm going to use them here just to plot these points to position these points on the graph so we have the chart the open high low and closing uh, prices then we have the uh, Bollinger Band low curve the upper Bollinger Band curve we're adding the um, markers as well so these are the entry points and then we're adding the upper Bollinger Band curve and I usually plot the um, results just to verify that my conditions are working well so this is a signal it's true that we're closing uh, below the Bollinger Band that's something that we can see and the high and the closing price of the green candle this candle is above the high of the previous candle so this is the second condition this is candle index 632 so 632 well the previous uh, the previous candle actually we're checking for the previous candle 631 so 631 is 26 so the rsi was 26 and it's below the threshold of 30. this is why it triggered because it's not the current candle, it's the previous candle. Going back to our conditions, just to verify that this is what we wanted. The RSI, that's true. So we're checking if the previous RSI, so I minus one is below the uh, threshold. So anyway, now we can check another signal just to, to see some visualization. Let's take uh, this candle, 84, for example, something random, um, 84. Well, we can start at zero and we will see more than one signal, I guess. So this one is a short one, it's a perfect entry. This one as well is a perfect entry. As you can see, it's a short position, but provided the trade management part is also as efficient, but we can see that the signals are usually good. But there's only one way to find out. Let's backtest this indicator. Now for the backtest, I'm using a very simple approach just to test the potential of the indicator. It's nothing fancy regarding the trade management part. I'm using the ATR to define the stop loss and take profits. But we're going to multiply the ATR by something called the stop loss coefficient and another parameter called the take profit coefficient. So the take profit is equal to the take profit coefficient time the current ATR and the stop loss is equal to the stop loss coefficient times the ATR. And these two parameters are not fixed. So three and two are not fixed. We're going to optimize these. We're going to run a back test so many back tests. We're going to check for different values of these two coefficients and what would be the returns. So this is done using the back testing library here. I'm just slicing the first 10,000, but I don't think we have more than 10,000 rows. Let me check. So we have 3,291. So these are uh, our signals. So and I would assume the data frame is not very far from this. So 3,390 rows because this is the daily time frame. Remember, so we don't have a lot of candles. Not a lot of rows. So these are my stop loss, my take profit, 
And if the signal is equal to two and we don't have any open trades, we define the stop loss and the take profit positions. We apply a buy, the buy function, using the stop loss and take profit and the size. The size is equal to 0 0.1, so that's 10% of my current equity, of the current account. And then in the opposite scenario, when we have signal is equal to one, we're opening a sell position and I'm changing the stop loss and take profits according to these distances computed uh, considering the ATR as well. And here we go. So I'm defining my backtest uh, function. So we have the strategy 10,000 as a start, a leverage one to 10. So the margin one over 10 commission. Notice that in the documentation of backtesting, a commission of 0 0.002 is accounting for the spread. That's the average spread for Forex. Okay. So I took 10 times that just to be on the safe side and to consider the spread and other commission fees. And we can take 20 times that even like 0 0.004. I don't think it would change anything at this point because we're using the daily time frame. And that's what I like about higher time frames. You're not affected by the trading fees as much as scalping bots and lower time frames. So running the back test, we're going to optimize the stop loss coefficient and the take profit coefficient between uh, 1 to 1 1.5 for the stop loss coefficient and the values of one to two for the take profit coefficient. And so if we run this, it's going to take a few seconds. We're going to see 60% in return here. So that's the result. The um, win rate is 66%. We have a number of trades, 18. The drawdown, maximum drawdown is minus 13%. That's excellent. And an average drawdown of minus 3.2%. So that's not bad. Actually, it's kind of safe. Uh, assuming that we have the same results on many different assets. The um, best trade was 21%, worst trade minus 7%. Now, the uh, commissions, in the backtesting documentation, the recommended commissions accounting for spread in Forex is 0 0.0002. So that's from their documentation. I multiplied this by 20, 0 0.004, just to be on the safe side and account for the spread and the um, trading fees. And the reason why we still have this um, positive return, I mean, if I decrease this by a bit, let's say 0.001, I'm sure we're going to get a bit better results. So that's 68% instead of 60%. 60, uh, 60%. So the reason we're not affected much by the commissions is because we're using the daily time frame, And this is why it's safer to use the daily time frame on fully automated trading bots because your profits are not going to be eaten by high frequency trading in the sense that you're scalping and you're passing 10 trades every hour. That's too much commissions, too much fees, and it's going to uh, kill your strategy somehow. So it's much easier to trade on the daily time frame if you're trying to automate um, a strategy. Now, the only drawback is that we only got 18 trades in this case, and this is why this um, strategy is a bit selective. Now, not only it uses the daily time frame, so it's kind of slow. You need to wait. You don't have as many days, so you wouldn't get a lot of signals during a year. But also, if I use the uh, Bollinger Band width threshold equal to 0 0.3, which is the recommended value by the original authors or videos of this uh, strategy, I'm going to run this and I'm going to check number of, we got only two trades over the whole set of data from 2011 up to 2024. And that's not much. So if I'm using the conditions as they were written, they are very selective and we're not going to get enough trades for one asset. The uh, thing with this strategy is that it has to be used on different assets at the same time. So you need to have like a hundred assets and you run the strategy in parallel on these 100 assets, let's say, or 500. And you're going to identify unique and very rare opportunities on different stocks. So it works well, but you need to be careful when using it. Just be aware the frequency of the trading is very low. Unless if you accept to be less selective, so you decrease, let's say, the Bollinger Band width threshold, and maybe also the thresholds of the RSI, high and low, and so on. So you go through the functions here, the uh, conditions, and you might want to loosen up a bit. There are different ways of doing this. So checking the current candle, the previous candle, modifying and refining these conditions in a way to make it a bit more frequent and less selective. But the interesting part is that we take a look at this heat map, which shows the returns percentages 
for the different stop loss coefficients and take profit coefficients, it's always in the positive. So we always have positive. Remember, these are taking into account the commissions, taking into account the trading fees and the spread. I would say for the daily time frame, that's a great indicator. Just don't forget that we didn't use anything fancy in the trade management part. I just used a very simple approach using the ATR, the coefficient to define the stop loss and the take profit, and that's it. There are many different ways that we can improve the trade management part, especially if you use it in a hybrid trading style. So the bot opens the trade, sends you a notification, and you will manage when to close the trade because you will observe when you have reversal signals. You might want to use a trailing stop and things like this, depending on your trading style and how much time you have to sit behind the screen or to follow up with the trades. If you don't have much time, then you need to find a way to automate these conditions in a better way. And this is it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you for staying that long. And until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.